Hey, y'all. This is April Bird coming with your daily live. Happy, happy, wonderful Wednesday to each of you. Happy Holy Week. This is the week of triumph. This is a week of love. This is a week of victory in Christ Jesus. I pray that today you know what went down th this week, the Holy Week. What took place for you and I? And what, what great love the Father has for each of us that he sent his only son to die on a cross to pay a price. He who knew no sin became sin for us all. Oh, what love. He died for the righteous and he died for the unrighteous. And we just want to tell God, thank you today. Thank you for loving us. When sin entered, entered, entered the Garden of Eden, God sent his love. He sent his son to come down from heaven and to be a perpetuation for our sins. Amen. Good morning, Antoinette. Good morning, beloved. Good morning to each of you. Happy, happy Wednesday. Happy Holy Week, beloved. We're gonna we're gonna um minister and just sing the song with CC Widens today. I do not own the rights to this song. It's called He's a Wonder because He is a wonder in my soul. I pray that He's a wonder in your soul. Amen. He's so good, He's so kind. And I just thank God for the opportunity to have life in my body today. That my lungs are expanding. Good morning, Val. Good morning, beloved. Good morning to each of you. Our lungs are exp expanding today. The blood is running warm in our veins. Our heart is pumping with blood. Jesus Christ, the Holy Lamb. The lover of our soul. The Holy Lamb. The Holy Lamb. Lover of our soul. The one and only that I am. Jesus Christ, the Holy Lamb. He is the Holy Lamb. I pray that you know today that he is the Holy Lamb that came and that was shed. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. He is He is so worthy to be praised. He has got to be exalted above the heavens and above the earth. We give all glory unto your name. Lord of Lord, lover of my soul, of all, the one and only that I am, Jesus Christ, the Holy Lamb. He's Jehovah. He's a lover of our soul. Yes, he is Jehovah. I pray that you will fill in those blanks, whoever you need Jehovah to be. If you need him to be a provider, he is Jehovah Jireh. I pray, oh God, if you need him to be Jehovah Rapha, he is the God that heals. He is God, Jehovah to seek in you, the Lord our righteousness. Hallelujah. We sung that one, Al the Alabaster Box. We sung that one a couple of weeks ago. And he is awesome by C.C. Winans, the Alabaster Box. And they was talking about Mary and how she washed her his feet with her hair. Praise God. Good morning, Ozzy. Good morning, beloved. Good morning. Yes. Yes, I love CC Winans. I do not own the rights to this music. He's a wonder. He's, he's a wonder in my soul. Is he a wonder in your soul? He's a mighty God. He's a wonder. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder. He's a mighty God. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. Yes, he is. He's a mighty God. He's a wonder. He's a good God. Thank you, Father. Yes, my father told me a long time ago. He's a wonder. And my father told me a long time ago that he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. That's one of my dad's favorite favorite lines. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, beloved. Our God. He has been so good. He's so good. So good. He's been so good. Has he been good to you? Because he is a wonder in my soul. Has the true and living God been good to you? He been good because he sent his son. If you don't know anything else, you can tell him thank you for sending his son. Thank you for letting him die in our stead. I miss you all too, Bruce. Tell Lula I say, hey, we gotta, we gotta, uh, we gotta, we gotta meet up. Good morning, Glenda. Good morning, classmate. Good morning, beloved. So good. He's so good. So good. 
He's been good. Yes, Lord Jehovah, the Holy God. He's a wonder. He's a mighty God. So good. King of kings. Lord of lords. He's a great I am. That's what he told Moses. Tell him, who do, who do I say that sent me? Tell him, I am that I am sent you. He's a mighty God. So good. I pray that you're praising him today because he's been good. And this is a triumphal week. This is the holy week. This is a victorious week. We don't have any reason to be sad today. Today is a this week that we celebrate. The holy week. It, it went down and it was we were triumphant. Jesus got victory from the grave. Amen. I pray that that was short and simple and to the point and that you are, were able to, um, to uh, get in on the praise. I don't know what's going on. They're doing work in my area with the internet. So I hope that we're able to finish. But uh, we're going to get out what we need to get out and I won't let that bother me. We'll finish later if we need to. Uh, we're going to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we honor you today. We magnify you. We lift up your holy and your righteous name. For you are such an amazing God. You are such a wonder. You're such a wonder in our soul. We just, we just adore you, God. And we love you because you first loved us, God. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our need. Our need for a savior. Thank you for redeeming us from the hands of the enemy. Thank you for reconciling your son to reconcile us and back, back unto you through his blood. Thank you, Jesus, for staying, following the journey and the, being obedient to the Father. Thank you for seeing it through. Thank you, Jesus. We owe you. Thank you. We owe you, and we pray that we'll be obedient to you. So, Father God, I pray that you forgive us of our sins, those things that we've said, done, or thought that were not pleasing to you, those things that you told us to do that we've yet to do. Please forgive us. Please cleanse us with hyssop. Stand up in me, God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Anoint me afresh. Give me wisdom and comprehending spirit. Speak through me, God. Take over. Be glorified. Edify your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen to, amen to God. I'm going to read... Um, I'm kind of, I'm trying to take you all through the steps, uh, move my laptop over for one fall. I'm going to take you all through the steps, um, to try to step you through like the week of the Holy week and what took place. And some of it is a lot of information. So I'm going to try to bring you up to speed and I'll cover a lot of ground. I'll hone out in, in a couple of scriptures, but what I'm going to do, I just want you to see what took place and what Jesus did throughout that whole week and on his way to the cross. Amen. I pray you'll be patient with me. I just want to make sure you all understand to know what happened, what Jesus did for us. So you'll be able to know where to go back and get it. So you'll be able to understand what it is that God, that Jesus did for us by the, what the father led him to do and, and sent him on a command to do for us. Amen. Good morning, Minyata. Good morning, beloved. We're going to come out of the book. We're going to re, we're going to, um, Reconvene where we stopped on yesterday. We stopped at uh, Matthew chapter 20, 21, verse 24. We kind of went all the way to 27, but we're going to start it, pick up on 28 today. Matthew 21, 28 through about 32, 35. Um, I pray you have your Bibles open, your phone, your tablets, iPads, whatever manner of Bible that you use, I plan to teach from it. Amen. Uh, this is talking about the parable of the two sons. And this is uh, when Jesus was talking to um, talking to the chief priest. They were asking him all type of questions about the authority that they had sent, they had given him. And so it's going to lead us up to here. And it, I'm going to read 26 because we didn't read over it yesterday. Uh, it says, but if we say from men, okay, Jesus asked them, who do you say the baptism of John? Who sent him? Was it from heaven or was it from man? That's in verse number 25. And they reason among themselves saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why did you not believe in him? But if we say from men, then we fear the multitude for they count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you what authority I do these things parable of the two sons verse 28 it says but what do you think a man had two sons jesus talking to the chief priests and the elders the man had two sons 
And he came to the first and he said, son, go to work in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. And afterwards, he repented and he went to work in the vineyard. And then he said he went to the other son and he said, go to work in my vineyard. He said the same thing likewise. And the son flat out said no. He said, but he did not go. He said yes, but he did not go. Which of the two sons will did the will of the father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots received, believed him, believed him. And when you saw it, you did not, you did afterwards relent. You did relent and you did not believe in him. And so Jesus is telling them, good morning, Antoinette. So Jesus is telling them the, the harlots, the, the prostitutes, the people in the street, the tax collector, the, the sinful people will enter heaven before you. Because when John came to you and John told you about the truth of God's word, you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not, you did not afterwards relent and believe him. And so you still did not believe. So I'm going to be prayerful and careful as I tag my title. Will you obey God? Will you obey God? And that's for all of us. Will you obey God? Will we obey God? And previously on yesterday, we talked about, we talked about two days ago when Jesus went into Bethlehem riding on the, on the ass and, and they laid the palm branches down and I'm just bringing us up to speed. They laid the palm branches down and they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna, Hosanna to the most high and blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then Jesus, once they do, they do all this, everybody, the multitude, they're all praising Jesus, the King. And they want to know who is this man? This is Jesus of Nazareth. And so they want to know that everybody and the elders, everybody want to know who is this man that everybody is praising. And so now Jesus goes straight about his father's business. Jesus goes straight to the temple and he finds them selling, money changing, and doing business rather than praising and praying to the Lord. And he finds them selling doves and Mark account says they're selling animals like oxes and sheep and different things to sacrifice. So Jesus, caught, he's upset, he's angry, and he turns over the money changers tables and he throws over the, turns over the seats that, the, that they were sitting the doves on. He turns over all those things and the, and the chief priests, they were already mad at him about all the things he had done before and having all these people to start to believe in him. So they're already upset about him. And now they're caught. Now Jesus is causing them to lose more money because this is what they were doing in the church. And so they were upset with him. And so Jesus throws all of that out, cast them out of the house of God, out of the temple of God. And Jesus goes and starts to heal the lame and the blind that they brought to him. And then after he'd done that, he went on about his business and got the next morning and cursed the fig tree, came on and showed disciples that they need to believe and not doubt. They could do the same thing under the same authority. And then now it leads us up to where we are today. Now we're talking about Jesus is talking to the chief priests, talk to the elders. They, they bring in people with them now because they're trying to trap Jesus. This is their thing that every day they're going about wherever Jesus is somewhere preaching they're trying to tra to trap him and to catch him in something legalistic law, legal something legalistic that can uh, trap him to where they can put him in jail, season, put him in jail, and to ultimately kill him because they did not like the fact that they want to know what authority do you have to do these things because they did not believe that he was the Messiah. And the people believed that he was a good prophet. And so people were beginning to follow him and he was causing, he was causing them, causing them problems. And so now my tag, like to take my title prayerfully, will you obey God? Because now Jesus is saying, who do you say for baptism that was sent, that sent John? Was John sent from heaven or was John sent by man? And so the Pharisees and, and uh, the, the, the different people, they knew the chief priest, they knew, good morning, Joanne, they knew the truth. They just decided they wasn't going to be obedient to God because they say, if we say that was from heaven, he going to say, well, why didn't you believe? And if we say from men, 
These men believe in John and believe that John was a prophet. So they're going to probably jump on us. So they were, they were fearful of the multitude. So now Jesus already know. They don't know that Jesus is omniscient. He knows all things. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. So he hears these conversations and he knows what they're thinking. Because he knows our thoughts are far off. Amen. And so now he's telling the parable of the two sons. He said, so let me, let me ask you a few questions. But what do you think? A man had two sons and he came to the first and said, son, go into the vineyard. And, and he said, no. And then he, then he, he repeat afterwards, he repented and he went into the vineyard. Then he went to the second son. Likewise, said the same thing. And the son said, yes, but he did not go. He said, which one of these do you think did the will of the father? They said the first. So they knew what was right, but they didn't do what was right. So they were trying to catch and, and stumble Jesus up and him him up in a corner. They were trying to always catch him in a fault because they were scholars of the word. They knew the law. They knew what was supposed to be done, but they did not do it. Do that. Do that. Sound, does that sound like anybody that you know today in the church? We know what's right. We can tell everybody else what's right, but we don't do what's right. When it comes to us, we think that we're exempt. Oh, contraire. Will you obey God? God is, Jesus is walking around. He's doing, he's about his father's business. He knows he must go to the cross, but he's not letting the cross cause him to forget about the day-to-day -day ministry. He's not let, allowing the cross and what his ultimate journey would be. He's not allowing those things to stop him from doing what the father had called him to do. And so now that the asking all these questions and, and so Jesus telling them the harlots, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, all these sinners, all these people, they're going to enter into heaven way before you because these people are out there in the street. They're tired of doing what they're doing. They've seen it all. They've done it all. And they're tired and they're getting ready to come to into the house of the Lord. You and I better get ready because they're coming. And when they get there, they're going to be about the father's business. While we're in there playing and been playing all this time, like the Pharisees and the elders, we know the word, but we are so far from the father. We are being obedient. We are living the way the father called us to live. But these people are getting ready to come out of the streets. And they are going to be ready. They're going to be on fire for the Lord. And he said, even they are going to enter the kingdom of God before you. He said, the, the harlots will enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believe him. And when you saw it. You did not afterwards relent and believe him. You didn't even, when, even when you knew the truth, even when you, you, you came into an error of your ways, you realized you was wrong, you still didn't repent and change your life. You kept on doing what you were doing. You kept on sinning. And so here Jesus is going to the cross in a couple of days, and he is not about the cross. He is not thinking about the cross. He's thinking about his father's business. Good morning, Oliva. He, he's, he's thinking about his father's business. He's thinking about ministering to the lost. He's thinking about healing the sick, healing the blind, healing the lame. He's, he's reclaiming the house of the, of the Lord. He's in the temple. He's turning over money changers. He, this is the house of prayer, and you have made it a den of thieves. You're doing the most in my house. And he's casting them out, and he's calling people. Good morning, Miss Bussy. He's calling people out, and he, he's saying, no, this is not the way it's going to go down in my house. And, and you know everything. I'm giving you these parables because they're trying to trip up Jesus. And Jesus is saying to them, I know everything that you're thinking because I'm omniscient. I know everything you're thinking. So I'm going to ask you these questions because I need you to understand what's going on. You supposed to be out in my vineyard. I've asked you to go in my vineyard and work. I asked you to go out and I've asked you to. To live a life to win lost souls to Christ for the kingdom of God. I asked you, had two sons, go out into the vineyard. And you said, no. But then you changed your mind, repented, and you went and you did it. So thank God that we changed our mind and we were about our father's business. 
But likewise, the other son, I asked you and you and you said you were going to do it. But then you didn't. Which one of those that did the will of the father? And so Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. He's talking to the elders and he's trying to get them to the brain, the, the wheels to start turning. He's trying to get them to see the error of their ways. But they're so busy thinking about money. They're so busy thinking about their livelihood. They're so busy thinking about scamming people. Good morning, sissy. He, he's trying. They're so busy thinking about scamming people and doing and getting money and getting this, and getting that bag and, and, and lying and stealing and killing that. They are, they're not hearing what God is, what Jesus is saying to them. Jesus is trying to tell them, like, you are, you, I'm telling you, you are the reason, the, the harlots, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, the people that you're talking about, the people that people talk about, the people that are in the world, the people that are living foul, they coming to the house of the Lord. And they're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. They're more righteous than you are. They're going to enter the kingdom of heaven before you. Because you a willfully disobedient. You know my word. You know what it says. You've been under my word. You've heard me Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day in and day out. You heard what I said. You've been in my presence. You've heard the preacher preach. These people have been out in the street living on drugs, doing everything else. They have not. They are doing what they do, but they're tired and they're going to come in while you've been judging them. They're going to come in. They're going to take your place because you have not listened to me. You have been in this house. You know the word. You're a scholar. But you're so busy trying to trip me up. You're so busy trying to make the word work for you. You're so busy trying to tell somebody else they're wrong. You're so busy trying to be judgmental that you have not honored my word. You have been living according to your will. You didn't want to do what you want to do. You didn't want to live the way I actually live. Will you obey God? Because God is talking to them. They so busy trying to get money. They so busy trying to, to get him gone, seize him and kill him, trip him up so they can do what they want to do. They can continue to live the way they want to live. They want to do the thing. They want to, they don't want these people because if you start to believe it and you start changing your life, then you ain't going to live the way I want you to live. You can still come to the church. They don't mind you coming to church, but the they don't want you to come to church and try to change. That's going to be a problem when you come and change. They want you to keep coming, keep lying, keep not speaking. They want you to come and keep backbiting, keep gossiping, keep living the life, knowing the word and not doing the word, walking around disobedient. Good morning, Eric. They want you to keep doing the things you've been doing so they can keep you hostage in your brain, in your mind, keep you hostage in your heart. See, Satan don't mind you going to church. Satan got a problem when you try to change. See, go on over there. You can stay in the bed, but now you get on up and go on over there and follow your legalistic ways. Follow your tradition and get up there and sing in the choir. Do all the things you need to do that you've been doing to make people think you're who who you don't want, who you don't uh, intend to be. Pretending who you don't intend to be. And so keep on going over there, Pharisee. Keep on going over there, uh, Sadducee. Keep on going over there, chief priest. Keep going over there, judging folks. Being over all the committees. Running everything. You got a pen in your hand. And you're taking notes on everybody else. But you don't You don't know because the harlots are going to come out of the street. The prostitutes. The drug dealers. All these folks going to come out of the street. And they're going to enter the kingdom of heaven before you. Because God says they tired and they going to come and they, they going to be hungry. They tired. They beat down. They don't have nothing else to do. They, they've at their wits end. They're going to come into the house of the Lord and they're going to live right. They ain't going to turn back. Good morning, Britt. Good morning, beloved. They ain't going to turn back. They going to come in there and they going to do it. They going to live. They going to give their life over to Jesus Christ and they ain't turning back. And they going to put the longtime church members, the elect to shame. Telling that's what he's telling about parable of the two sons. And so we need to get it together. This ain't about judging nobody. This is about inspection, fruit inspection. Are you bearing fruit? Now we go on to the parable. He's talking about the uh the marriage feast. Jesus talking about the marriage feast. He said, Okay, this is a king now. He's telling these parables to these, these Pharisees and these Sadducees because they mad. Because they coming over and they mad about the situation because they trying to trip Jesus up. And they ain't even about their own business. They think they know everything. You know how we can get the thing. We know the word. We think we can get cocky. We can get arrogant. And we think we just pointing fingers. Oh, you this. You that. Oh, you ain't doing this. Mm -mm. I thought you. Mm -mm, no. But that's a lie. He said, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. He will exalt us. He didn't tell us to exalt ourselves. We need to humble ourselves and he will exalt us. And so we're exalting ourselves with head knowledge. 
and the head and the heart have not lined up together. Because if you got head knowledge and you speaking all these scriptures and your life does not line up with what you're saying, you ain't no better than nobody else in the street. And so God is talking to the Pharisees. Jesus talking to the Pharisees. He's talking to them because they know they scholars, good teachers. They know the word. They know they just trying to trip Jesus up because he done came in on their territory. He done came in. These folks said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the most high. Hosanna to the son of David. They all, he, they, did you hear what they saying? Good morning, Sharon. Did you hear what these people saying? He said, have you not read the scriptures? That the, the babes and the sucklings will be perfected prey out of the mouth of the babes and sucklings is perfected praise. Do you not know the script? I thought you was a Pharisee. I thought you knew the word. I thought you were about your father's business, but you're not. You're about legalism. You know the word, but you're so far away from God. You don't have a relationship. You're just going over there at the church like you're at a community club. And you're just going in because you belong to the church, but you don't belong to me. And one day I'm going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. But Lord, I did all this in your name. I was over there. I was a minister. I was a secretary. I was over there. I was over this committee, that committee, but I was mean to people. People were scared to see me coming. They didn't want to see me coming. They were scared of me because of my attitude was so nasty. They didn't even want somebody coming to church. They want to start to get on your committee, but you're so mean and nasty and can cankerous. They don't even want to be around you, but you said you love. God is love. And you in the house of the Lord clowning, clowning bad. Bad, bad, bad. You think it's your house, but it's not. Will you obey God? Because God is going to come back. Like he said, in these Pharisees and these elders and these chief priests, right? You up in the church thinking the church belong to you. He throwing over money changes. He throwing over the seats of the dove. He throwing over things in church. People are dying. People are leaving this world because they think they own God's house. They don't own God's house. God owns his house. And you try to, you, you're a bad man or woman when you think you own God's house. I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you. Like scared, scared of you that if you think you own God's house, you, will you obey God? Will I obey God? Because God is coming back. He's, he's, he's reclaiming his house. He's reclaiming his house. And he, now he's talking about the wedding. He, this is a king. He gave him this parable as this king. He said, uh, it was a king who threw a party. He invited his special guests, but they didn't show up. So now he said, he tell his servants to go out and get them. They, they busy. They say they busy. They busy doing the uh, they field. They busy about their stuff. They washing their cars on Sunday. They busy making sure their rims are shining. They busy about getting that bag. They busy. They busy. They busy. And he's saying, they got comfortable with pandemic. They got comfortable with chilling and not want to go into the house. But they're going everywhere else. They're eating out. They're doing everything because we ain't lost no weight. He, they doing everything they want to do. And so he said, okay, they don't want to come to my party. I got, I got the best. I got the fatted calf. I got everything. The king. I got the wedding banquet set out for them. But they don't want to come. Oh, he said, so go take your service. Tell your service to go. He told his service to go out. To the highways and byways. Get the the prostitutes. Get the tax collectors. Get the get the uh bad, the drug dealers. Get those who people have been talking about. Get those who have a bad past. Get those who have fallen down on hard times. Get those who are depressed. Get those who are suicidal. Get those who don't see no way out. Invite them to the party. Because I invited all of these special guests. The ones who say they were saved, the ones who living for me. I invited all my righteous people to my banquet, my wedding banquet. They didn't want to come and they, and it must be something wrong, but go check again. Go back out there and check with them again. And uh, they didn't want to come. They busy. They doing their fields. They, they doing all this stuff that they do. They ain't got time for you, Jesus, the king. And so now go out there to the highways and byways and just bring everybody in. Whoever will come, invite them to this party because I got all this best wine. I got all everything set up for them. I got a wedding for my son. It's a wedding for my son. And then the folks that I invited won't come. Can you imagine having a wedding for your son or daughter and all the people that you know that's closest to you will not come? And when you say, hey, y'all didn't come. What's going on? And they said, oh, we was busy. We was taking a trip. Oh, we didn't put you on our schedule. I'm sorry. We we didn't RSVP. We we didn't see. Uh, we just ain't going to be able to make it. And you got a wedding for your son or daughter. Imagine the closest people don't come. So imagine you got a wedding for your son, Jesus, and you're inviting all these people to come to the banquet. And the people that you know that say they who they say they are, they don't come. They busy. 
They busy living in this world. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's when you can test and prove what the perfect will of God is. And so they 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 got they got they got conformed to the world. And so they don't want to come to your house. They don't want to come to your party, Jesus. They don't want to come to your church because they busy. They had plans. They're on vacation. They doing. They living their best life on earth. But you know, heaven and earth going to pass away, but his word going to stand. And so he's saying, go out into the highways and byways and get all those people that people have been talking about. Get those people that have been uh, laying down that in the gutter. Get those winos. Get all those people. Anybody who want to come, bring them. And they came. They came. He provided everything that they needed. But then Jesus comes out. Just say the king comes out. And he, he sees that the um the people at the wedding he invited all these guests and he's prepared everything that they needed but he finds a man in there that does not have on the the wedding garment hmm, he asked him where was his wedding garment good morning marlon good morning beloved he asked him where's his wedding garment let me get over here and i can read that the king asked him where's his garment he said, um, he didn't say anything. He said, so he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? Um, the king said to the servants, bind him, hand him foot, hand and foot, and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. Now, I invited you to the party. You didn't deserve to be at the party. We don't deserve to be at the party. I invited those who I called to be there, and they were too busy. But you came into my house any old kind of way. Any old kind of way. God issues an undeserved invitation to undeserved people. And in addition, provides the righteousness the invitation demands. So coming into God's house to his banquet the wrong way. When he's offered us righteousness because we all deserve death. So when he sees us, he sees us through the eyes of his son. So when I, when I invite you into my house and you come in my house not in the right garment. You come into my house nasty. You come into my house pride and puffed up. And you come into my house thinking the house belongs to you. You come into my house mistreating those who have been barely made it to the parking lot. And just eat, found enough strength to ease their way in the door. And, and you treated them bad. Um, he said, how did you get in here? How did you get into my house like this? Because I have provided the righteousness and the righteous, I've, I provided everything you need for the undeserved and the, but all of them, all of us are undeserved. So I provided everything you need to get yourself out of the street, to get yourself out of your way, to get yourself out of being a whore, a whoremonger. I invited you out from being in the street. I invited you out from being crazy, and you come up in my house. I've, 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 I've provided the righteousness that you need. So you're coming into my house with the wrong garment on. Hmm, that wrong attitude, hatred, malicious, dark hearted, mean, backbiting, lying, cheating, committing adultery spirit in the house of the Lord. Wrong motives. You name it. We are not going to get away with it. It's a wedding banquet. That was in, we was invited to. Because we deserve death, but he invited us to the banquet. Our undeserving self with the righteous and a compassionate and holy God. A long-suffering God invited us. He will not accept us coming in his house, in his banquet, his wedding, any old kind of way. Will you obey? Will we obey God? He had provided all that we needed. So some responsibility has to fall upon us. We can't just come into the party when we was we wasn't even righteous to be in there. We would we don't even deserve to be there, but I'm just going to show up any old kind of way cuz you invited me. 
after something so deep, the Pharisees began to ask Jesus. They got out all of this about the wedding. All of this about the wedding. He gave them all these two parables. All that they could say was, hmm, Jesus, what do you think about this? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now, God gave them all of this information of these two parables about going into the vineyard, the two sons. Good morning, Lena. And then he, he, then he, now he's telling you about the wedding. Then he even talked about the hub, the wicked husband man when he had the vineyard and he, he just leased it out to him. He leased it out to him and he went to a far country. And he came back, he sent his servants to come back and ask for harvest. It's fruit time. You're in my vineyard, I just leased it out to you. I didn't give it to you. I leased it to you. And I, and I asked you for, I, I sent my servants to get my fruit. I sent my servant to say, it's harvest time. And you killed them. So I sent some more servants back to you. Like it's Harvest is fruit inspection. It's harvest and you what? You kill them too. Then I said, well, surely they won't kill my son. So I'm going to send my son. And they saw my sons afar off. And they already conspired to, to kill him. They seized him, beat him out, slew him, and killed him. And Jesus is trying to get their attention about what's getting ready to go down. What's getting ready to go down on Calvary. And they, they, and that's all they can think about. Now, he's telling them some good meat. Like we're in the church, we get some good meat. We get some good word. And God is speaking to us. Because if you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, his Holy Spirit indwells every believer. So he's giving us some good stuff. He's convicting our spirit of the wrongs that we are doing in our lives. And we're still saying, God, uh, what Jesus, what do you think about? Paying taxes to Caesar. What? What do you think about paying taxes to Caesar? That's all they were about money. That's all they were about their livelihood. That's all they were about this world and what this world had to offer. They wasn't even distracted. They wasn't even thinking about what Jesus was saying. We have been so caught up in this world. Caught up in not being late for work. Getting being obedient to everybody but the Father, doing our own thing, living for people and what people think, gratifying our flesh and dealing with the consequences, beating ourselves down, trying to be a part of this world when God didn't even call us to be in this world. Be in the world, but not of the world. We not in the, we are we are spiritual beings having a natural experience. And he and we still trying to be about the world. That's all they could think about. All this word going on. Somebody be in church sleep. I mean, they the word be going for. And they and Satan gave them the lullaby song. In church on their phones. Texting. In church. Talking. Thinking about what everything, because the devil does. What you're going to eat out the church. Everything. And the word is going forth. Life and death is going forth. And here we are. Here we are missing the whole moment. Missing the moment. And here these people, God, Jesus gave them some stuff. And they said, what do you think about Caesar and who they should pay taxes to? Jesus said, you hypocrites. Why are you trying to trap me? I'm telling you about all this I've given you. I'm trying to even still get your mind right. And I'm telling you hypocrites. Why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin. Jesus said, okay, this is what you're doing. Show me the coin. You know, show me the coin. Jesus said, whose picture is on the coin? They said, it's Caesar. Jesus said, Caesar. Then give Caesar to what Caesar's do and give God to what God is do. And so now Jesus has set them straight. The Sadducees came here to go. Some more Sadducees come the same day. Now Jesus going through all this in one day. The Sadducees came, came the same day asking Jesus about the resurrection. It said, teacher, Moses said, said Moses told us that a man, if a man dies and he does not have any children, he said, 
his brother is supposed to marry the spouse so he can have children. He said it was, and then they said it was seven brothers and the wife, they each one kept dying and the wife married the brothers. So when we don't believe in resurrection, but in resurrection in heaven, whose wife is she going to be? Jesus said, do you not read the scriptures? Do you not know the word? That's not going to be any marrying given in heaven. Nobody's going to be married in heaven. That's not going to even be given marriages in heaven. So what this now, Jesus is telling them all of this information, giving them all these things, giving us all these opportunities to get it right. He's beating us. He's, he, he's so compassionate with us. He's so long suffering with us. He's giving us all this time to get it right. But they're so busy trying to trap him. They're so busy trying to keep him from living. And knowing that they don't even realize that it's God's plan the whole time. He already sent his son. This meek, humble, this behold, the, this humble and meek one that I send. The one that I uphold in high esteem. The one that I delight in. The one that I put my spirit in. I'm the one who sent him because y'all are sinful. And y'all about to go to a crisis eternity and die in your sins. And you're about to go to a crisis eternity called hell if I don't send my son. And the fact that I sent my son for you, I'm st and you still being messy. You still trying to kill my son. Even though I set it up because I know he's got to get to the cross because his blood, some blood has to be shed. Some blood has to be shed. A lamb has to die because our sins are already from Adam's nature. We already stained and nobody else, our blood wouldn't matter. And so I got to send my son. He's got to go through all these steps this holy week. He got to go. All these people mistreating him. He's still about my business. But do you know the scriptures? You don't even know the word and you still think you're doing something. But I'm going to send him to die even for you. I'm going to send him to the cross and he's going to be obedient because he is the fittest one for the journey. He is the one that can go to the cross and can stay on the cross and be obedient to me because I know what I put in him. Because he is me and I'm him. And so I'm going to the send him to the cross for you and me. He's doing that for you and I and y'all trying to beat him down. Everywhere they went, Jesus said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm God of the living and not of the dead. They were astonished at his teaching. The crowd, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the high priests, the elders were all in astonished over what Jesus was saying. All this teaching he had gave them. Then after hearing that, he silenced the Sadducees. They decided to gang up on him, not knowing he knows all things. You know, I mean, they had an, they had an, they went one more time. They had an expert lawyer. They had to come back again because he done silenced the Sadducees. So we got to go and gang up because the Sadducees couldn't handle them by themselves. The Pharisees couldn't handle them by themselves. And the elders, the chief priests, they couldn't handle them by themselves. So we got to gang up on him. Because we got to trap him. Because we got to kill him. We got to seize him. We got to kill him. We can't do it in front of his multitude because they believe in him. They believe he's a good prophet. They believe in John the prophet. So they, we can't do it. We got to try to trap him up to get him in jail. So they went to this expert lawyer and questioned Jesus about the greatest commandments. Jesus, what are the greatest commandments? He, he got to flunk this one. What is the greatest commandment? Jesus said to love the Lord that God with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind, all their mind. And the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. After Jesus gave them this answer, hmm, and he said, All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Jesus said, Since you're here, what do you think about Christ? Since you're doing all this question, ask, what do you think about Christ? Whose son is he? They said the son of David. Jesus says, how is it that if David speaking by the spirit calls Christ Lord? For he says, the Lord said to my Lord, set at my right hand until I, until I put you, your enemies under your 
feet. If David calls Christ Lord, how can he be his son? I guess they was crying out, son of David, son of David. But Jesus came through the lineage of David from Jesse's son. He from the lineage of David. Boaz is all of this. Oh, Obed. Jesus came from that lineage. But he is not the son of David. And so he, after that, no one had answers. And from that day, they had no more questions for Jesus. He silenced all of them in a whole group. The expert lawyer, the Sadducee, the Pharisees, the elders, the, 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 the uh, high priest. He silenced all of them. And from that point on, they had no more questions for Jesus. They could not trap him. They could not trip him up. And so as you see on tomorrow and later on, tomorrow's Thursday, we got to wrap it up so we can get to the cross. But I'm going to try to give you as much as we can to get him to the cross. And I might have to go over, um, move some stuff around, not move around, but skip over some and you can go read for yourself. But I want to get you to the cross. I want to see that how Jesus went through all of this in the Holy Week. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, beloved. Jesus went through all of these things in the Holy Week, but he still didn't forget about the cross. Jesus didn't let them trip him up. And we got to stop letting people trip us up because our eyes should be about the cross. Our goal should be the cross, should be for heaven. It should be about the, the, the heaven, about getting to the Father, about absent from the body to be present with the Lord. And so this, it was going to trap him up. People going to come to try to trip us up. People have come in my DMs and questioned what I've said. Do you have time to talk? I said, I got all the time you need. Because I don't, I don't claim to know everything. I don't. But I know a whole lot of people that do know a lot of stuff. I have resources and I have, I have common sense. I'm not dumb either. And I have the Holy Spirit. And I have God's command to go forward. I'm not, too, I'm not cocky or proud that I can't say I don't know everything. And if I see something I say it wrong, I go in and I type it in the chat. But people have called me. And I said, call me. They called me. And I tell them what I tell them. They don't call me back. They don't call me no more. So you, anytime you're going to be about your father's business, somebody's going to challenge you. And it's okay to challenge me because I'm not perfect. I'm human being. And if you can teach me something, I'm okay. I have a teachable spirit. But don't come with the foolishness because I'm teaching Bible. I'm not teaching April. I'm teaching Bible. And if you have your Bibles open and I have mine open, Call me. And it's okay to have a talk, a conversation. It's okay. Because if I can learn from you, I'm okay with that. But if you can learn from me, you should be okay with that as well. So just know that the Pharisees are going to come. The Sadducees going to come. They're going to double team up on you. They're going to think you crazy. Good morning, Chima. They're going to think you crazy. What does she do? I ain't know she preaching. I ain't know she doing all that. I'm teaching you this word of God. I'm trying to help you so we can get our lives together so we won't be going to hell. So we won't be no hypocrites. So we won't be living, a, saying one thing and doing another. <laughs> I don't understand it. Like, we on, we in this thing together. We trying to get to heaven. But the enemy is going to come. He's going to send his people to try to trip you up. And make you think that you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. And if he don't come, that means you really ain't doing nothing. So he comes in my DMs. He comes. He comes in with the enemy trying to make me think I, I don't need to be up here. All that kind of stuff. But if I can do anything. I've been in a, a church for 28, almost 30 years. And there's some good teaching over there at Elizabeth Baptist Church. If I've been in those four walls for almost 30 years. It's time to come outside of those four walls. And give it to the masses. I can't keep holding what I got. And keep regurgitating to other people. To, that I already know and getting what I'm getting. It's time to come out. And to tell a dying world that he loves them. It's time to come out our shells. And, and, and go scared. I be nervous every time I get up here. My mama said. If you ain't nervous. I'll be scared of you. You should be nervous. And so God bless each of you. I know that the enemy is going to come. That's what he does. Because he, if you ain't doing nothing, he ain't going to come. But when you start telling somebody about God's word and people start feel like they want to change and they want to grow and they want to move out of from where they are in that darkness into the marvelous light, he's going to hit you. Boom, 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 boom. He's going to hit you. 
But I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Ain't no weapon formed against me going to prosper. We all, he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And we all got to go through something. But I pray the day that I said something that will get you closer. You and I closer. I always include myself. I'm not up here just telling you something. It's us. We're human. And as long as we're housing this thing called flesh, we're going to sin and come short of glory of God. But the more we know and the closer we get to God, that's what we're going to we're going to. We're going to learn more and we're going to be compelled to want to do something different. We're going to be compelled to say, you know what? That's not right. And so our neighbors and our people looking at us, we're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. Yes, the blood of Jesus. God bless you, Mignana. God bless you, Tina. God bless you, Lena. All of us. God is such a good God. Will you obey him? And today, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the party of sin, today is a great day to do so. All you got to do is be willing to admit that you are a sinner. Because remember, we all sinners saved by grace. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sins. And that God raised it from the grave. By faith, you're saved. By grace, lest any man should boast. Because we all deserve death. But God in his great love and his great mercy sent his only son. To pay a sin debt that we owe but could not pay because our blood was stained through Adam's nature. And so I pray today, if that's you, it's your day. Romans 10 and 9, it's your day. And if you've been in the, you've been one of those people in the church where you've been mean and cankerous and, and, and you've been living out in the street and you've been living according, a different thing according to what you say. Nobody in your circle know you saved. Nobody know you saved. You've been a secret agent. You've been living different than what you say you are to in, in church. He's married to the backslider. He's married to the backslider. He's waiting to open his arms and to welcome you in and kiss you.